Tuesday, April 9th, 2024. We're going to call this meeting to order. This meeting is being video and audio recorded for future cable broadcast. Please silence all cell phones for the duration of the meeting, and we will rise for the presentation. Of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, on our agenda tonight, we have local school choice hearing and the FY25 school department budget hearing. So I'm going to start, please, by requesting a motion to open the school choice hearing. So moved. Second. Second. And I'm going to hand it over to you to give a little bit of context, Dr. Bailey. Yep. So this is a hearing. Um, I don't know if anybody signed up to speak regarding this, but um, as you know, several it's districts. Like I already screwed up. I didn't okay. do a roll call to open the school okay. meeting. So I do need to take a roll call vote to officially open the meeting. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Right. Great. Sorry, Dr. Bailey. Please carry on. Yep. So, as you know, some districts take in students from other districts, um, and that does generate some revenue. It's five thousand dollars for each student. Um, I've done a lot of research on this. While we would love to be able to, you know, bring in diversity and bring in some revenue, um, once the students are in our district, we would be on the hook for tuition for high schools. They would follow our students, um, and I just don't feel that we can afford that. So my recommendation tonight is going to be um, to continue, like we've done in the past, to vote against participation in the school choice program for the upcoming academic years. And just know that we've been extremely thoughtful about it. We. Um, We've had legal counsel looking into things, the state looking into things, just to see if there was anything different that we should be doing. And at this point, we are going to recommend, I'm gonna recommend that we refrain from participating at this time. And the biggest reason is we would be on the hook for high school tuitions, and I don't think our budget could handle that. Okay. So if I could request a motion, please, um, to Decline moving forward with school choice. Yeah. School so, choice this would, so, so this would just yeah. After I just, I do just do my motion first, and then we'll open up comments and questions. Um, I have a motion. So moved. Okay. Oh, do I have a second? I, I, I tend to support the superintendent's recommendation. However, I think for the next year, we should revisit this issue. Um, if there, are, there are guidelines that. Uh, with that legislation, you know, with that uh, program, that what, since we had only uh, one of the few tu uh, uh, tuition uh, schools, you know, in high schools in Commonwealth, whether the, you know whether we you know seek seek a change for us, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I find you know state bureaucracies basically uh, they always good to tell you what you can't do. Uh, but you know, when they get something new, they, they stall it, and, and you know. So, so I think we you know. I, I think we got to be creative. You know, we are you know facing some decline uh, uh, in, in, in you know in registration of the children in enrollment. Um, we have to think ways of, of continuing uh, our income stream as well as you know, uh, in, you know employment of our st you know staff. If we go into too many, cut, cut, you know, we lose too many students. We, you know, we could affect our, our supportive staff, our auxiliary staff, which in turn affects the quality of, of, our, of, our, of our, our output. So I, I, I would like to, you know, visit next year. I know we have a lot on our plate coming this year, but uh, I think uh, I think we should leave notes of, uh, stone unturned as far as keep, keeping our enrollments up. And, uh, and as well as, as our income stream up. So I think that was a, by the way, uh, you know, talking about enrollment, uh, uh, you know, it, it seems that New England is faced with a great deal of 
drop off you know, fertility fertility rates as far as people having children. And uh, so therefore we're going to be facing some, uh, all school districts might be facing some, some real shortages of, you know, of children. And therefore, therefore how do we how do we, how do we realign our, our, our budgets and, and, and output? So I want to just add that to the, and I've talked too long, but I want to add that, that type of thing to revisit this and seek waivers maybe uh, and all and things like that. It's something that we are discussing with legal counsel right now. Nothing that can happen for this moment, but it is something that we're exploring just to see. Right. So. So we're on the same page. Right. And just to make sure the public knows, this is an annual vote. So it is uh, it's an annual vote because we are choosing not to participate in school choice. Right. So it is revisited every year. Yes. And we should, to your point, Mr. Hawkrop, look at all the variables when we make these decisions. Um, so point well taken. Um, so did we have a second on the table? I've got a second for that motion of um, not second. participating. Thank well, you, Mr. Now, Chair, but the vote would be in the regular public agenda. The hearing is just the discussion. Oh, okay. My apologies. That's okay. Okay, so we take that vote later in the meeting. Yes. All righty. So, I don't know if anybody else has anything else they want to discuss. Okay. I know that I believe no one signed up for delegation regarding this hearing. Yeah. So, yeah. So, when it comes to school choice, um, it's opened up to everyone and it is a lottery. So if we're talking about budgets, we do need to consider special, special education coming into our district as well, which could cost much more money. And we also want to think of the other side that we don't want to take away from our students that live in, live in the mission to bring in other students that might need special needs, which again, is a lottery system, so there's, there's no discrimination. So we do have to look at all the factors. Any other questions or comments? Okay, so we'll take that formal vote later in the agenda. Yep. Um, so if I could have a motion, please, to close the public hearing for school choice. Motion. Sure. Okay, and we're going to do a roll call. So all those in favor? Closing. Mrs. Downey? Yes. Mrs. Gomes? Yes. Mr. Hood? Yes. Mr. Halcroft? Yes. Ms. Cotero? Yes. Okay, so if I could now have a motion, please, to open the proposed FY25 school department budget hearing. So, so moved. Okay, and we'll take a roll call vote. Um, Sarah, if I could have a roll call vote, please, um, to initiate the hearing. Mrs. Downey? Yes. Mrs. Long? Yes. Mr. Hood? Yes. Mr. Halcroft? Yes. Mrs. Cadet? Yes. Once again, I will hand it over to you, Dr. Bailey. Okay. For this um, budget hearing, I'm going to ask Mr. McIntyre to facilitate the discussion. Good evening, school committee. Good evening, public, for those watching, listening, tuning in at a later point in time. Um, the purpose of this public hearing is to provide, you know, the balcony view on the budget at this point in time. Um, this is required by law, and it's an opportunity for you to learn a little bit more about the budget and, and to provide feedback. Um, so without further ado, um, the, bu the budget supports our mission and our vision. Um, the mission of the Kushner Public Schools in partnership with staff, parents, and community is to promote student success, growth, and learning in a safe and supportive environment. The vision of the Akushna Public Schools is to be a high-performing school district where all students are afforded the opportunities to realize their potential. Um, within our our model, we have our strategic objectives, which are achieving academic excellence for all students, creating thriving social and emotional learning experiences for all students, and strengthening partnerships with parents in the larger community, which again, every line item in our budget supports one of these objectives. Um, the process is really a three-step process. You begin with a budget basis, which is called the baseline budget. So that, that's the cost of the services provided last year, and the here you're building the budget, so the, the cost of providing services in FY24, you start with those services, you increase and adjust the cost according to you know going rates, inflations, funding, things like that, and then you analyze the budget um, 
we tend to do it from from the bottom up. You know, we solicit feedback from our teachers, our principals, our, our leadership team, our central office team, and and bring it up to the superintendent, who then recommends the budget to the school committee. But during that time, we, we look at anything to see where we can gain efficiencies, or maybe we need to implement more services, um, and just look for identified growth and continue to. So currently, where our budget stands, the budget baseline, not the final recommended budget, but the budget baseline would be $16,402,174. And that would be the cost to provide the same level of services in FY25 as in FY24. Those services are broken down by um, DESI category in this instance, so personnel expenses, um, administrative, instruction, pupil services, operations and maintenance, community services, and programs with other school districts. As you can see, through building the baseline, there were fixed costs, fixed increases, um, $519,000 related to personnel. Administrative costs, we were able to provide level services while decreasing the, the budget approximately $18,000. Um, instruction, $200,000. Um, a, a factor of that was moving a contracted service into a personnel position. Uh, person, pupil services increased almost $200,000. Um, and then operations and maintenance decreased 60,000, approximately community services 6,000, and programs with other school districts, which is related to our high school tuitions and transportation, a decrease of approximately 86,000. Most of our budget are fixed costs. So most of those factors that I just mentioned, or, or categories that I just mentioned are fixed. So we have our salaries and wages where we employ approximately 145 faculty and, and staff and support staff. Um, many of them are union, union employees and this makes up approximately 62% of our budget. We have fixed costs in technology as we are a one-to-one -one district. Uh, we need a safe and reliable system and infrastructure and much of our curriculum is, is technology based. We have curriculum that becomes fixed over time as we prepay for subscriptions and memberships and things like that. Um, and again, most of it's technological, so you're paying for licenses that would otherwise expire. So we need fixed costs related to curriculum to continue to have access to this curriculum. Um, and that provides our central guide and consistency um, throughout our teaching and our learning classroom to classroom. Special education costs, those are mandated. Um, special education students need equitable access to the same learning that everyone else has access to. And then we further have to provide the same level of service that, as we did in the last year to maintain effort and be eligible for um, uh, other grant funding opportunities that, that help supplant and supplement some of those costs. Transportation, again required by law, we need to transport our students to and from school with, uh, with certain restrictions. Um, that makes up approximately 8% of our budget. And then because we have no high school, we have tuition contracts between Bedford High School and Fairhaven High School, where we have tuition-based costs that relate to 20% of the overall budget. And then further, you know, we are a school district, so we have two buildings that we need to maintain, um, make sure we can keep the lights on, the heat on, and clean for a, for a healthy and happy learning environment. So after we adjust and analyze the baseline budget, um, there were increased costs of 228000 $8. These would be additions to our local budget, and those represent a maintenance worker position that was once funded through the ESSER grant, and curriculum renewal. So again, curriculum becomes a fixed cost in our district because of our model. Some of those curriculum components expired, and now we're looking to renew those. That brings our grand total budget to $16,630,182, and that is what the superintendent at this time is recommending um, be our budget for fiscal 25. This exhibit, which, by the way, you can access all this material on our website to, to see the figures a little bit better, but this breaks down, again, the costs associated with our budget and shows that ultimately fixed costs do represent 90% of our budget and, and over 3.89% um, of what is actually only a 3.5% increase between fiscal 24 and 25. So that means outside mandated costs, we were able to reduce our budget almost a quarter of a percent. Funding opportunities, this is important because for a handful of year now, years now, um, and related to the pandemic, we've, we've 
receive ESSER funds. So a lot of communities, districts, whoever it may be, were advised not to um, not to put local budgeted expenses into these funding sources because you essentially create a cliff for yourselves. So we've done a good job of not doing that. Um, initially, we put a maintenance worker in ESSER and we realized the value of that worker that it does provide significant value and saves us costs on contracted services that it should live in local. Um, another change that came to local was a school website that originated in ESSER, but the costs are, are a wash because we're able to cut other services now that this web, now that are provided by this website. Um, on top of town funds, we also receive circuit breaker funds, um, E-rate techno technological funds, and miscellaneous state and federal grants that also help supplement our budget. Again, closing remarks, so building a budget is really a team process. Um, next steps, as, we'll, as we continue through this process and next steps, uh, we will continue to receive feedback from the budget subcommittee, the town, the public, um, the leadership team, so on and so forth. Um, the budget maintains level services, which is important to us every year. We don't want to cut services. We want to make sure we maintain our services or provide what is necessary. Um, so this budget maintains level services and looks forward to growth opportunities. Um, we strongly encourage staff, parents, and members of the community to engage in the remainder of the budget process. So once the school committee adopts a budget, which we anticipate the next school committee meeting in May, um, whatever that budget may be, we ask for your support. We ask for you to show up to town town meeting and, and help us vote for this budget because truly, this is this is what we need to support our students, to support our faculty, and, and to provide an education to the community, the, the students in the community. Um, every cut has a has a figure beside it. So you know, level services is a five hundred and seventy two thousand dollar increase between years. If it was a zero percent increase, you know. It would be a $572,000 deficit of services, if you will. Um, those figures can go all the way up to 3.5%. Um, for instance, a 3% increase would still provide $90,000 worth of deficit of services to us. Um, so if we don't get the support of the town, we don't get the support of the other committees, uh, and they ask us to reduce our budget even further, what does this mean? We're potentially looking at reduction in staffing, overhauls of some of our programming that we've made such progress in, um, looking at implementing student fees, elimination of certain activities, and just general overall setback. So we don't want to approach that territory. Otherwise, um, again, all this information is available on our website. You can always contact the superintendent's office, um, the business office, if you have any questions specific to this budget. And thank you for your time and support. Thank you, Ms. McIntyre. At this time, we can open it up to any comments or questions. I feel like I live and breathe this with Mr. John. <laughs> I was going to say, well, I do want to thank uh, Mrs. Gose, Mrs. Mr. Hawcroft, for um, your participation on the budget subcommittee. This is a very busy time of year for the school committee, and putting these budgets together takes a lot of work along with Dr. Bailey and Mr. McIntyre. So thank you everyone for all your efforts in, in putting this together and tweaking those numbers, I know, so many times. <laughs> yeah. And I know the principals and all the leadership team work so hard, you know, getting the numbers to be, you know, equitable and make sure that we're not overspending, um, which is very important, right? Because we're not only protecting our students, but we're protecting our town as well. Um, so I, I'd like to thank everybody for all their help and um, again asking for all the support from the town to, to um, at town meeting to be there and, and to support our budget whatever we end up you know, going with at, in May. Thank you. Sarah, Ms. Scums, yeah. is there another, because we had a meeting with the, with the town recently, mm -hmm. is there another check-in between subcommittee and the town? What's like the next steps leading up to the yeah, so the fun part is 
in, in all reality is that nobody knows exactly what we're going to get from state and what we're going to get from federal. And so we're still guessing at numbers. And it's, it's possible that we don't know our numbers until like the end of May. Sometimes they were even saying like July and August. And you're like, wait a second. So we're guessing at these numbers. We're going to, you know, cut down, cut down, cut down, and then come to find out all of a sudden there's, you know, $3 million, you know, something crazy at the end that, that we were not expecting. So our plan was, and everybody agreed, was just to postpone as much as we can. Um, and that's why we pushed the um, the final thought for the school committee to our May meeting, because that's of literally a month before the, the town meeting, um, because they do need to you know, get the figures in the books. However, we're hoping that we have an idea of what the state and the federal is, is giving us right before then. And with the subcommittee, John and I are ready to meet as many times as needed once those figures do start coming in, uh, if they are different from what we expect. Okay. Yes. Uh, Mrs. Gomes, number one, when we met with the you know, committee with the selectmen and the finance committee, other departments have really not formulated the budgets yet. We didn't know is what what is really you know, needed, neither they what is really needed in the final one. Secondly of all, uh, due, due to a glitch in the, uh, in the reimbursement uh, field where the State Department of Education had, had uh, planned for inflation of only 4.5%, when inflation actually in schools was at 8%. Or it might have been the ways and means. I don't know what, what came about. So they may be revisiting that issue, which will turn into effect, you know, affect our budget, so to speak. Um, so that's where we stand right now. now the state was having uh, a shortfall in, 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 in the receipts until last month. Now they, you know, now they took in on $128 million in addition to what they did not anticipate coming in. So you know, it made it made, made that uh, future a little brighter. And I, and I, so so I says, well, let, let's wait and let's wait and see and go with the, with the uh, budget that we you know, now have, which has been you know really streamlined. Uh, and see what uh, what happens. So I think that answers the tough questions. Yeah, I appreciate it. Okay, so any other comments or questions related to the FY25 budget? No? Okay, then with that, I'm going to request a motion, please, to close the proposed budget public hearing. I'll make that motion. I'll second. Okay, and then we'll take a roll call. We'll call vote to close the meeting and return to open. We are returning. We have to open the school committee meeting. Regular school committee meeting. Yeah. Mrs. Stanley? Yes. Mrs. Gomes? Yes. Mr. Hood? Yes. Mr. Halcroft? Yes. Mrs. Cordell? Yes. And I do want to acknowledge that we did see, after we closed the school choice hearing, someone in delegation wanting to speak. So I do want to acknowledge um, that individual and um, we can't reopen the school choice hearing, but what we can do is welcome you to um, give public comment. Once we open the school school committee meeting later, there is a delegation as part of the meeting. So um, welcome you to make that comment then. Um, so with that, um, I do want to now have, request a motion, please, to open our regular school committee meeting. I'll make a motion. Okay. All right, and if I can take a roll call vote, please. Mrs. Downey? Yes. Gomes? Yes. Mr. Hood? Yes. Mr. Halcroft? Yes. Yes. Okay. Now we do have executive session uh, this evening, so we are going to move right into executive session. Um, so if I could have a, have a motion please to move into executive session to discuss the following with intent to return to the public session to conduct, a, to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel or to conduct collective bargaining sessions or contract negotiations with non-union personnel to discuss the deployment of security personnel or devices or strategies with respect thereto safety and security of staff and students. I can request that motion, please. Thank you. And a second. A second. Okay. And we can now move into the second session. Roll call. Do we need that roll call? Yeah. 
Mrs. Dowling? Yes. Mrs. Gomes? Yes. Mr. Hood? Yes. Mr. Halcock? Yes. Yes. Okay, we're going to resume our regular school committee meeting. So we're going to move right into our first item, uh, which is the consent agenda. So just get everybody all caught up to where you need to be. Um, and so what I'd like to do is request a motion to approve the minutes of March 5th, which is 2024, and the minutes of the meeting <coughs> on 3 2025, and all payrolls and warrants. If you remember, the consent agenda loops everything into one. So if I can have a motion, please. So moved. And a second. second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Do we have anyone on delegation still here to speak? I know we had this one, but I think it left. That was it. Okay. okay. Well, great. All right. So no, um, so we'll move forward. Um, there's no old business moving into new business. So I'll pass it over to Dr. Bailey to get us started. All right. Thank you. And I'll move it right along. Um, our first um, item on the agenda, I'd like to call up Mrs. Chesney, and she is just going to review with us the AES Violin Program, which was funded by the Artists in Residency Grant. So I'd like to invite Mrs. Chesney, and if anybody else, uh, we'll... No, I don't have anybody else. Okay. Madam Chairwoman, School Committee, thank you so much for having me. Um, one of the highlights this past year has been our program with an artist in residence, um, Jeff Angeli. And here's Jeff right here. He is someone that you might already know. He um, has been working in the South Coast Music Group. He calls it South Coast Lessons. He's been a musician in the South Coast area for over 20 years. And he, along with um, the facility, facilitator Beth Dupree came up with the idea of introducing violin skills to third grade students. So they've been actually doing that for a, for a while. Um, just so you know that the program is definitely connected to our district plan. Um, we want to make sure that students are engaged in higher order thinking. Um, music is a great way for that to develop their sense of belonging and um, build emotional competencies. And of course we were also partnering with a community member. And I just looked, as we were thinking about this, the research really does show quite a lot of benefit from learning a um, musical instrument, um, starting with how someone feels about themselves, even things uh, like the executive functioning, and of course, as you would, might expect, um, language skills and reading. I did not expect um, the pro-social skills, but that does kind of make sense when you're working in an orchestra. Um, the way that we were able to get it's about a $6,000 value. Um, we were um, cho chosen by Jeff to bring this into the program. Um, we went to um, Mr. McIntyre and Dr. Bailey to make sure that we were all set to be approved. And it's been 40 sessions with every third grade class. So every class has been regularly working with Mr. Angeli. Um, he provided practice violins to the students as well. And here's some pictures of them playing. And okay, so I just, before I play the clip of them playing, my kids did strings. It can be a little rough at the beginning, but it's really good, okay? So just, I just wanna be, I just wanna manage the expectations. for like six months at least um, that they could you could hear the tones there that's really 
excellent work on his part and on the kids' part too. And are there any questions about the program? No questions. Awesome. I just think it's so fantastic it, just to offer more choices too to the kids to experience more instruments. It's just yeah, great. I, it's I was awesome. just really glad for the opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay, so the next one is school choice, is just to continue that conversation from earlier the hearing. Um, I'll keep it brief, but my recommendation to the school committee is that you vote against our school district's participation in the school choice program for the upcoming academic year. Um, I believe it's in the best interest of our school community to refrain from participating in the program at this time. I have a motion please to follow the superintendent's recommendation against our school's participation in the school choice program. So moved. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. The next thing is the agreement from Reeds. Uh, oh no, it's the annual appointment of the superintendent to the board of directors for Reeds. Okay. So this is something that we do every year. You would just need to um, have a vote. Um, which allows me to serve on this board of directors um, for the Reeds Collaborative. So if I could request a motion to appoint Dr. Bailey to serve as the Accretionate School District's represent representative on the Reeds Board of Directors. Mm -hmm. motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, the next one's also associated with the Reeds Collaborative. It's the um, amendment to the agreement. You've had it in your packets, um, and it just requires a school committee vote um, and then the signature from the chair. Okay. I should request a motion to approve the Reeds Collaborative Agreement Amendment as written. So moved. Thank you. Wait a second. 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 Okay, and all those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank Aye. you. Uh, the next thing is um, I wanted to bring up a regionalization study to the committee. Um, as you know, I've been talking about the fact that you know, to run the school district, we can't continue to run it fighting with the town every year for, for money, right? Mm -hmm. So we want to look into the possibility of what are our possibilities, and that a study would do that for us. And I was hoping, um, I've talked to Mrs. Gomes about chairing that committee, but that I would love to have a vote from the committee, and then anyone who from the committee who wanted to be on that committee. But this is something that potentially could take three to five years um, you know, to see it through, but the study would be a start to see what the options are and, you know, mm -hmm. if it's fiscally sound for the district, et cetera, and to explore different options. Mm -hmm. And I know Mrs. Gomes probably wants to speak to this matter. Yep, yep so I've done this before. We, I did it about nine years ago. So just to give you an idea, the first thing we need to do is establish grants to pay for the study. That's the first thing, so it's not costing the towns any, any money and then we would reach out to multiple towns whoever we were interested in not just one but multiple and, and work collaboratively with them on the grant for the study for each additional district and that in a nutshell is like the first year year and a half and then once you get all that documentation um, there's multiple steps for the school committees to vote on, for the towns to vote on. There's multiple layers to make sure everything is properly vetted out. And it can stop at any time when, when either the towns or the school districts decide that it's, it's not worthwhile anymore. Or we're moving forward. Okay. I think I'll just emphasize this is a study. This is to get information. I know our town several years ago mm -hmm. uh, attempted to do a study around regionalization it did not move forward um, but you know this is just to give us the information we need to make sound decisions with other school districts um, so long process ahead of us right. starting one step at a time but um, this vote would allow us to to get the process started um, so with that I'd like to request a motion to move forward with the regionalization study and appoint Sarah Gomes as the chairperson of this committee I'll make that motion. <laughs> All right. Uh, any further comments, questions about the process? How how do we how are we dealing with the like who wants to be on? Mm -hmm. So we establish this, then we deal with that piece. Yep. Yes. And I would leave that to Mrs. Gomes. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. So um, I believe the first step, and I'm going to double check with Mass to see if things have changed, but it's publicly announced. 
and then we need to make sure that we have at least a town member, we have a school committee member, um, union representation is usually asked, uh, their parents, so it's all inclusive to make sure everybody's going to be safe. And it'll be advertised as well. All right, so we have a motion on the floor as well as a second. Um, all those in favor? And aye. Aye. Thank you. Oh, no, no. Okay. Great. I would be uh, willing to participate on that committee. Oh, yeah, great. Yeah. Good. We can't. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Okay. We've got two. We that's can, great. We can have a broader discussion. But mm -hmm. no, that's fine. That's great. All right. So next, I'd like to call uh, Mr. Missler up to give us a uh, technology update. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Good evening Madam Chair, School Committee members, Dr. Bailey. Um, I'll try to be brief on this. Uh, quick one, we did a, a camera system update. It's uh, been needing for a few years now, uh, so we took care of that recently, uh, which ensures that we're secure, our system's up to date, can handle anything we put on it, um, and offers us a few extra bells and whistles. For email, uh, there's a part of me that wants to get super techy on you guys, but I'm gonna save you for that. Now, long story short, we've added an extra piece of security, no cost to us, uh, but it's something that a lot of businesses and districts don't do. We have it in place now. It's up and running perfectly with no cost. Um, MCAS, kudos to our principals of both buildings. Uh, MCAS has been going off swimmingly. Um, students have been doing a great job bringing in their devices charged. We let them know through our s'more, you know, please have devices charged and ready to go. It's been great. Um, and the last one I just have is it's been business as usual. And one part of the job we don't talk about a lot, but it's updating, rolling out security patches, all that to make sure that we're secure. Um, and just to remind everyone, uh, for the last uh, year and three quarters that I've been here, we no longer utilize outside vendors. So our savings is from within. Um, all the department, all the whole tech department handles all of this internally. So we've been, uh, just to say kudos to them, they've been doing a great job. And um, yeah, we're much more secure now than we've ever been. Fantastic. Great. Thank, Thank you for that questions. Thank you, Mr. Missler. Clear. Thank you. All right. And then other items that may not have been anticipated, I just wanted to review a couple of things very quickly. Um, we had the solar eclipse yesterday, and we had the majority of students from both buildings participate in a viewing. Um, very few children were not able to, and if they were not able to, there was a live stream going on in the classrooms um, inside the building. But it was such a great learning opportunity for our students because many of the teachers had done lessons prior um, and I just have to say and give kudos to our teachers as well as our students that everything went off without a hitch so it was really a great day um, the second thing we were just notified tonight of a grant that we received um, for a new curriculum for our eighth grade civics um, this is the DKP which is the democratic knowledge project through the One to Eight Foundation, and I would like to thank Ms. Regieri, uh, Michelle Sylvia, the principal at Ford Middle School, Karen Bentley, a teacher here at Ford Middle School, and Christine Demers, the coach. They've all been pretty instrumental in getting this through, but the grant includes curriculum, PD, there's quite a bit. It totals $11,468 over the next three years for PD. Um, and the only thing that the district, I, our annual cost will be $300 annually for program participation. But this is very similar to the PD, the extensive PD that we went through for the Open Syed program, which was the free curriculum that we found out about through our professional development that we go to, Ms. Regieri and myself. Um, but this DKP curriculum empowers student voice through agency. It promotes sustained inquiry and critical thinking. It's aligned to the new civic standards and it helps with the civics projects. So that's just a little um, announcement. Obviously, as we get into things, you'll see presentations along the way, but I did want to let you know that we were just notified tonight that we received this grant. It's so great. For so long, civics have not been a part mm -hmm. of our you know programming and so this is really great really really great mm -hmm. um, is the civics curriculum would you consider it neutral in politics and in everything that's going on well, it's, in the world? I would say yes I would say it's standards based so whatever the standards are yes okay. I just again 
as a parent, I want to make sure that everything that's taught in the school is considered completely neutral, not one-sided or, or the other side when mm -hmm. it comes to especially civics. I would say that if you have a specific question to can contact Ms. Regeri, okay, perfect. and then you can have a specific conversation. conversation. Perfect. The last thing I want to go over is we sent out a survey to our families. Um, we're looking at a company called Alphabest to provide before and after school programming, and this is just a quick introduction to that because they offer enrichment activities, but um, within the first 30 minutes of the survey, we had an overwhelming response, which was wonderful to see. So we're gonna continue exploring that. We have a team that we will send out to um, area schools that have Alphabest, um, but we think it's been needed. Um, it's something we want to explore fully, and if we can get this um, off the ground, we look to do it for the next school year. But I will keep you all informed. I just wanted to let you know that we did send out that survey, and we got quite a great response, which was great. And that is all I have for tonight. All right. So then we will invite um, Mr. McIntyre for the business manager um, update to the podium, please. Chairperson Downing, school committee, thank you for your time. Uh, business manager report update. So budget, FY24 budget. The numbers that you see in front of you are through March, so that's three quarters of the year. Coincidentally, just kidding, it's not a coincidence. Um, about 25% of our budget remains for the, the last quarter of the year. Uh, most of that is salaries, as you can see in the AES, FMS, and district lines, while many of the other lines are spent down or encumbered to be spent down with little to no funds remaining. Um, we have a targeted budget freeze at the end of April, beginning of May, so that we can kind of cut off expenses for the rest of the year. At that point, you know, outside of non-emergencies, everything should be ordered or, or in hands or on campus or spoken for through an encumbrance. Um, and that will let us analyze if we have any serious um, budget savings or deficits and, and what we will do with those funds. As far as, oh, and, and coincidingly, if there will be transfers, which I can tell you there will be, um, between categories, those will be presented in May or June for school committee vote as required. Um, you know, some of this is trying because of the, the vacancies of the town accountant. You know, we, we kind of have to get creative with where we're recording some of our grant expenses and local expenses um, because of account numbers not being created, so on and so forth. It's all tracked on a spreadsheet. We have it handled, but it's going to cost some back and work and, and cleaning up. Um, so just kind of wanted to address that. FY25 budget. So we've met quite a bit with, again, people of all layers of the team, um, budget subcommittee especially. I think we've been occupying a lot of your time, so thank you to those members. But the reason we're doing so, again, is because the, the lack of clarity on the state and federal funds that the town's going to receive, and we don't want to make any sacrifices that we don't need to. Um, so we're opening the, we're keeping the budget open essentially till May um, for school committee vote so that we can work with all those involved um, and, and get some clarity on where our numbers truly need to be without making sacrifices to our services or our staffing. Um, and you know we'll go from there. Um, and one piece of leaving the budget open and, and shared with these different departments and avenues is the, the ability to review and make changes. So we have made changes since the budget had, was presented back in February. Um, you know, one of the more significant changes we just caught was a, a figure, an offset figure that I was carrying for circuit breaker um, that I was carrying at a higher number than what was actually going to be received next year. Um, but we were able to catch it now before the budget became final and, and it became a shortfall for us. Um, so you have notes on that there. Please direct any questions uh, if you have them related to that instance and, and potentially funding that gap through um, our sp special education stabilization. Um, but that was all discussed with budget subcommittee in detail. Facilities, so again, this is a project that excites me, but it takes some time and, and it's you know very task-based and, and a lot of literature to read. Um, so that's some energy management services, request for, qual for qualifications that I've mentioned a few school committees in a row now. Um, so we received four submissions from Energy Efficient Investments Inc., Energy Management Consultants, Siemens, and Train. Um, some of these packets are 400 pages, you know, 300 pages, 200 pages. So we have an evaluation committee, if you will, um, of myself, Superintendent Bailey, and 
our facilities director along with our owner's agent that was hired specific to this project to evaluate these vendors and their bid submissions and determine the best fit for our school where we can maxi maximize energy savings, grants, tax exempt leases, things like that and get these buildings up to snuff. Um, ultimately what this project does, just to repeat again what I have in the past, it looks at our building envelope. It looks at where we can save you know, on energy costs. It, it works towards the town's green initiative as we're a green community. Um, it looks to save us money while updating our, our me mechanical gear, our generators, our boilers, our, our air quality control systems, um, things like that. So it's a very thorough process and we're gonna get an investment grade audit on this entire thing with a report with monetary values tied to each upgrade and, and you know, uh, a condition of each system. Um, so it, it's, it's very interesting, it's gonna be very thorough, but more reason not to rush through it and to do it the right way. Um, because there will be information that we can hold on to and take advantage of for 20 plus years. Can you remind us what the timeline is once you've selected? Yeah, so it depends on who is selected, but um, you know, on side conversations with the vendors that have submitted bids, some of them are ready to go with, with the investment grade audit as soon as we select them. So then they'll come in and it'll take you know, a month or two for them to go through all the components of our buildings. You know, they look at doors, the exterior doors, windows, the brick, um, again, to as big as boilers, our heating systems, things like that. So they look at everything, and a lot of that um, relies on us getting them materials timely too, so as built, schematics, um, access to the buildings, but they'll work on our off hours, and you know, generally that takes a month or two um, to come up with an investment grade audit. From there, you, you kind of negotiate terms, you look at the reports, you work with the owner's agent, who is, again, you know, hired by us, they're on our side, um, and you come up with a contract um, to, to move forward at an agreed upon rate with energy guarantees that if they're not met, we get paid by the vendor so that we don't have to incur a cost because their systems weren't as efficient as they expected. Um, and, you know, in that timeline too between the grade audit and the contract is measurements and verifications which they'll run systems they'll they'll, they'll uh, put together formulas on spreadsheets that kind of to to portray what a newly implemented system would kind of mirror and see what kind of energy it would use and savings they would have and again they come up with figures that we then work with the town's financial advisors um, and the town to see how it will be funded and there's there's a plethora of opportunities, again, through green communities, through um, just infrastructure grants, through tax-exempt bonds, through bans. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really up to us at that point on what we can afford. Um, and then we get moving right. and make some changes. So again, it's exciting, but it's cumbersome and um, it takes time. Um, moving on to food services. So again, just another highlight of that programs, um, which is the farm to school highlight. So we were able to secure funds, not a ton, but we're making the most of them, you know, $6,000 from USDA, um, Northeast Food for Schools. And the program is to help increase purchasing locally. So um, again, on the sheets in front of you, we listed some of the farms that we've used. Um, Jonathan Sprouts in Rochester, Joe Schakowsky and Hadley, Little Leaf Farms in Devons and Backyard Farms in Madison. And with those farms, we were able to get you know, locally grown and sourced cranberries, um, butternut squash french fries that we taste tested with the kids that they had a blast with. And I know our principals can allude to that. Um, we've, done, we've done lettuce for, for farm fresh salads, um, which we've added to our menu. Um, and you know, with that, we've added tomatoes that we were able to source from Madison. So it, it, it's, it's fun. We get the kids involved, but we're also, you know, reaching goals that we set last June and, you know, having a more nutritious menu, items, options, um, broadening the horizons of students and what they're willing to taste and getting them excited about trying new foods other than, you know, chicken patties and french fries or whatever it is. So, so I know in one of my recent focus groups, I met with third grade and they had a request to have um, soup on the menu. So next week, I believe there's homemade chicken soup, noodle soup coming. And that was because of student voice. 
Um, so we're able to accommodate in that way. Um, not the first time, so I do want to give our nutrition director um, kudos. Yeah, shout big, out because she's done a big shout out job. to Shelly Mello, our nutrition director, as well as the kitchen staff because they have to yes. be able to change with these changes. And um, you know, we lost uh, Dee Silva to retirement in, in the winter, and Shelly's kind of been filling that role at both schools and everyone's just really coming together as a team and working well together and, and, and learning the new processes and procedures and, and trying these new menu items and it, it, all the feedback internally and externally have been positive so again another positive for us and it's exciting change so um, we look forward to presenting again in June with an updated presentation the goals we've met and feedback from you on, on where you expect us to go beyond that. Any questions on any of the items? Great, thank you. Okay. All right, um, I would welcome at this time any reports from school committee members? No, nothing. All right, and there's a number of communications noted there for you to read uh, at your convenience. Um, our next school committee meeting is May 7th, correct? Yes. All right, back here um, in the library. If there is nothing further, I would request a motion to adjourn. Okay. Second. Let's take a roll call vote to officially close out. Before 8 o'clock. <laughs> right before 8 o'clock. Uh, Just for you, Mr. Howcroft. Mrs. Downey. Yes. Mrs. Gomes. Yes. Mr. Hood. Yes. Mr. Howcroft. Yes. Mrs. Cardell. Yes. Thank you.